I want to hear about your background in ballet. Oh, yeah. And we talked okay. a little bit about earlier about like how you were kind of a nerd when you were younger uh -huh. and like you weren't hot. And nope. so you had to develop this thing called a personality. I know. Terrible. Which Terrible way to grow up. Yeah, no, I definitely um, – I grew up moving around a lot. So I never had like a – like a good core group of friends. And I think that's what really made me super nerdy. Mm -hmm. And so even now I consider myself like kind of an introvert. I'm very happy being alone, you know, some most of the time, whatever. So I feel like that I was a very weird, nerdy child. And then obviously doing ballet my whole childhood didn't make me any cooler, like mm -hmm. at all. Um, because, you know, every day after school I was in the studio and every summer I would go to summer programs, you know, nationwide or um, internationally. And I was really good. And it was about high school where I was like, man, I don't know if I really want to do this. I kind of want to finally have a normal life. Um, and so I was apprenticing with a company and I just kind of like burned out and was like, I don't want to do this. OK, so then a couple years pass. I get my degree. I work in the professional field and I have like a jokingly like a midlife crisis. I mean, I'm only 34, but I was still like back then I was like. No, you know, that's my biggest regret in life is that I never pursued ballet. So I just randomly decided to pick it up one day, trained myself for a year. Um, you know, I was in the studio every day, had my point shoes on every day. You know, I was trained yourself like you didn't have a trainer? No, I mean I would go take ballet class, okay. but like I knew what I was doing because I was at a professional level before I quit. Um, so why I'm telling you this, I took a pretty big gap trained myself for a year, auditioned for a bunch of companies and got in. Mm -hmm. So I danced professionally for two years and was like oh my God, I remember why I didn't do this my whole life because it is so incredibly difficult. But I definitely had like a gift and a love and an affinity for it. And I'm really glad I got to like accomplish that dream. I wish I would have done it when I was younger. You it's know? crazy like how – it's amazing what you can do with your body. As oh, a you can do anything. Like and like literally. the way it feet up though. Oh like, yeah, look at these things. Look at them. They look like, fine to No, me. this one was broken. That one has like a big callus on it. So when I do like foot fetish scenes, I'm always like, are you sure you want me? Really? <laughs> I was just going to ask seen you. These? Okay. <laughs> you know, you get you get that toe and this broken toe in a dude's mouth and you're just kind of like, Ugh. You, know? <laughs> you don't want to put on your consent checklist like, don't suck my third toe from the, on my left foot, you know, but so you, you just can. let it ride. You can, you can, but like, you know, that's, that's a me problem. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, it's so physically rigorous and does yeah. it, you know, there's rumors that it encourages eating disorders. Do you oh, feel absolutely. Like that's true? When I was dancing, no, um, because I was working out, I'm, I was naturally very thin. I was working out hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So you take class for two hours in the morning. You'd go straight to rehearsal. You'd work out on your lunch break. If you didn't have rehearsal in the afternoon, you'd go for a run. You'd do conditioning. Like you're moving your body all day. So it's really easy to stay really slim. But on the off periods or when I quit and your body changes, that was the worst for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm about 20 pounds heavier right now than I was when I was dancing. Which is crazy because like you're not. You wouldn't recognize me. My face was like a little skeleton. It was like yeah. very. But I was still on the bigger side for a ballerina. You need to be 110 or under wow. for guys to be able to lift you. And I've always had like thicker legs. I think that's what my fans love about me. But my directors always hated it. They were like, you have to slim those thighs down. You you stand out. You're too bottom heavy, you know. And so that fucked with me a lot. So that's interesting because I always thought that it was like this mm -hmm. aesthetic, right? That you it would is. It's be about thin. your line. But it's also, I mean, mm -hmm. it's about the guys being able to lift you. Yes, so it's there about, is a function like, to it too. Yeah. You don't want to be the big girl. You yeah. don't want to be the one that when they pick you up, they're like, ugh. You know, that was always like, how am I going to go? I can go have a green juice for lunch. You know, won't be eating this week. Thanks, thanks, Todd. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's just like, whatever. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but I mean, that definitely must have instilled like a real sense of discipline in you. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely made me who I am in terms of like this type A perfectionist personality. I'm always concerned with aesthetic and being prepared and whatever. And I love that about myself. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't change that. But it is a really um, kind of mentally demanding way to live your life, yeah. you know? I do want to talk about um, a little bit more about your beginnings. Oh, yeah, yeah. So when you started, you didn't actually show your face, right? No, I didn't. I so, was so shy. Yeah. I was so shy. I We actually never talked about your leap. Your leap. Oh, my God. Into, into the, the adult industry. Jeté so, yeah. into the adult industry. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I had left ballet, was doing graphic design. COVID happens. And um, I was bored and I was lonely. And I was curious and I had seen Chatterbait 
And that is still the only platform I've ever cammed on. I love them. I do a lot of work for them, um, you know, with their corporate and their events and stuff. And I just, I was so grateful that I found them first because it's a very broad um, audience, a little bit of everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of kind of wild, kind of wild west, I feel like, when you're camming on Chatterbait specifically because it is a freemium model. So mm -hmm. people don't have to pay to watch you, if, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't set it up that way. So I was really nervous about that because I do come from a very conservative background. You know, I know the internet's a wild place. I didn't know what to expect. Okay, so I would sit there with just my lips and my mm -hmm. and that was it. And I would talk and I would flash and I would just like whatever. And that first night, I think I made $150, like just doing that. And for me, that was a lot of money. I thought that was so cool mm -hmm. and I was hooked. And How I think long were I you on it. for? Oh, maybe an hour. Okay, so that's not bad. $150 in an hour isn't bad. Uh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I thought that was so cool. And so, yeah, I was I hooked ever since. And I think about two months in, I started showing my face. Or I would do privates and I would, because people were like, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> right? What's wrong? Do you, are your eyes fucked up? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, look, I got this eye. And then I would like dip down to the screen and be like, and then there's that eye. So like, you know, I'm I have like, both whatever. my eyes. Yeah. And so I would, I started, yeah, I started going private and stuff. And the reaction I got was so positive and so wonderful. And I was like, yeah, you know what? If I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to jump in with both feet. Mm -hmm. And so then I just started showing my face and the money was much better when mm. I was showing my face and showing everything and using toys and, you know, whatever. It, yeah. But it was a slow kind of progression for me. Right. like taking things at my pace but yeah look at me now yeah look at you <laughs> now look at you now yeah. so how did you make the jump mm -hmm. the leap mm -hmm. i don't know what are your best the, the releve the the what <laughs> no. you know the little yeah the little jump i can't i don't know why what's I'm trying it called to my fingers on a shakat on shakat on a shakat for on shakat okay on shakat how did you make the on shakat <laughs> studio um, so that was really funny. I had gone to an expo with Chatterbait and was approached by um, one of the producers at Browsers. And they were like, Who? You have a great Chris. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe it was going to be Kieran. Oh, no. Kieran. Oh, it's always Kieran. It's always Kieran. No, He's always no. like pulling the girls in. Right. Oh, Jesus. And he did. He did that too. Yeah. I have. I did work with him Kieran's soon after a good that. Scout. No, but it, he was he was actually kind of shy and like very normal guy. And he was like, uh, you know, he kind of like talked to me sideways. Like, He's really sweet. He is so sweet. We're yeah. good friends to this day, yeah. you know. And I don't know if he likes when I tell this story, but I he came up to me and was like, you know, if you ever you got a great look, you know, if you ever wanted to do a scene, we'd love to work with you, figure it out, whatever. And I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Like, gross. Everybody was, you know, always trying to get something from me, you know, like uh -huh. whatever. And I stood there and I saw I saw him walk back over to the browser's booth and and I was like, wait a second. That would be really cool. Maybe I do want to do I didn't realize that what I was doing online was hmm. you know, it, yeah. I thought it was a different category. I thought it I thought it was different. And um so I remember it probably took me about five minutes and then I ran back over to him and my little like six inch pleasers and was like, actually, Chris, um, can we talk? I think that would be really cool. And he was like, Yeah, whatever you want. So we had a couple conference calls talking about what type of scene I would want. And then a couple weeks later, I was in Miami shooting three scenes for browsers. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.